Okay, so we have our first question here is, um, let's see, uh, so the student is in a private high school in the Northeast with a 4.1 weighted GPA, uh, leadership in multiple clubs, four-year extensive volunteering, consistent participation in science fairs, okay, uh, great recommendation letters and high praise from teachers. However, without standardized test scores, uh, for ED Northeastern and Carmel McKenna, was GP alone potentially be a deal breaker? Um, well, I mean, that depends. Uh, 4.1 weighted GPA could be pretty solid, but I, I would say it tends to work better if you're going to go test optional. If you did have closer to straight A's, uh, I think you could still be relatively competitive. Uh, I would say, first of all, try to exhaust the options first, right? Because you still have a summer to prepare. I wouldn't necessarily shut the door on taking standardized tests. Uh, if you haven't really maybe like blocked out the time to go ahead and prepare for it. I mean, you should have at least two or three shots at taking those tests before you go ahead and decide if you're going to go test optional. Okay. But uh, no, the GPA loan wouldn't be a deal breaker, right? They'll also factor in just how competitive that private school is. Okay. Next. Um, did they disclose the rates for international versus domestic students? The UCs do eventually, right? Many private universities don't really do that. So we won't be able to parse out, you know, what the difference is between their international acceptance rates versus their domestic acceptance rates. Okay, next is, okay, so if a student, I guess, has USIFO, which is the Physics Olympiad Silver, USICO Gold, USIMO Qualifier, okay, so really impressive, GPA 4.0, SAT 4, 1590, has leadership in uh, an internship. Should they try for EA MIT? Sure, yeah. I mean, MIT's EA is non-restrictive, which means you can also try for an ED at a different school. Uh, I mean, their acceptance rate for EA, as you saw earlier, uh, is probably hovering around like four or 5%. So I think they could be reasonably competitive. Um, you know, it's, it's hard for me to estimate an actual percentage chance just based on like a little snippet like this. It's it's easier for me if I get to know the student and have a little bit more background. But yeah, I don't see why not, given what you've told me so far. They can definitely be in the mix. They should be in the conversation for an MIT EA application. Okay, next question. Uh, I'm currently living in San Diego. If I get offers from UC Merced and Ohio State University, which one should I choose? It's really difficult for me to do in a vacuum, right? So it just depends on what you want to prioritize. I would say, I guess in theory, Ohio State might be better ranked than UC Merced in, ter in terms of certain majors because Ohio State is their flagship university, whereas UC Merced is, is probably, like, like I said, the baby of the UC system. So if you want to stay in California, obviously Merced makes a lot of sense, but Merced doesn't also necessarily have as many majors to pick from compared to other UCs, much less a flagship university like Ohio State. So it's difficult for me to say because I don't know what other kind of like things you have on your profile, but, you know, Ohio State, if you're open to kind of like seeing a different part of the country, might be a good thing to explore if you still haven't decided which college you're going to, okay? Next, uh, is there a cap or limit in the number of honors or AP classes used to boost a student's GPA? Well, okay, so I think there's a distinction here between your UC capped GPA and what they actually have access to, right? The UC capped GPA caps you in terms of eight weighted semesters for honors AP classes, but that's largely used for UC eligibility purposes. It's to determine whether or not you can apply to the UCs. For many, many years, the top UCs like Berkeley, UCLA, UC San Diego, will have access to and evaluate you based on both your capped and uncapped fully weighted GPAs. So they will be able to see all the classes you're taking. So don't just stop taking AP or honors classes just because you've hit the cap of eight weighted semesters because that's not really the way they evaluate you. Okay, so still like the same general philosophy that you would norm normally follow for like top other universities, do the best you can in the most rigorous classes you can handle. Okay, next is for junior uh, year course selection as a STEM student, do you need to take an elective? Should we have like AP Psych or AP Computer Science? Well, it's definitely depending on like, I don't know what the rest of the schedule looks like, but obviously AP Computer Science would be a little bit more relevant for a STEM student, I guess. That would be a good thing to take. Um, but you also have to weigh which one you could potentially get a better grade in. That's also a factor you want to consider here, right? Should we still plan for AP Physics 2? Uh, yeah, I mean, if that's accessible, if you're more interested in like some sort of math or physics kind of, you know, STEM field, or if you're interested in engineering, physics would be probably more relevant than taking a non-STEM related AP, okay? 
Next, so I'm doing full-time research, have sports practice during the summer. Should I also take an asynchronous class at a community college in the summer? If you can fit it in, it's hard for me to tell just how sort of intensive the actual internship is. That would probably be your number one priority, which means if you're not sure yet how committed you need to be for the internship in terms of the number of hours, prioritize that first. But if you know for a fact that the schedule is not going to be that rigorous, you could probably squeeze in an asynchronous course. That would probably be okay. Uh, do sports help at Division three schools? Is it significant? I mean, not as much as Division one schools, but yeah, absolutely, right? So, because Division three schools need to field teams as well, right? So, if you're actually pretty good at those schools, it can be a factor, right? But it won't be as much of a factor as if you're being recruited for a scholarship for a Division one school, of course, okay? Should I focus on one volunteer activity or do uh, do I do a few different ones? Probably not a bad idea to try some different ones to first figure out what you'd be most passionate about. Have a main one, but maybe kind of vary it up a bit with a couple other ones, right? But I would still have one primary one that you'd be interested in, okay? Uh, is it possible for a current 11th grade student to re be recruit recruited for sports? How do you do it? What's the success rate? It just largely depends on your level of success in that particular sport, okay? So the person you want to talk to there is your coach at your school to really gauge and have an honest conversation with you about like how competitive you would be, how likely you are to be potentially recruited for that sport, okay? Uh, what's the youngest grade that may benefit from the GMU bio program? I think just as long as you're in high school. They, you know, they'll consider you. Of course, you know, um, if you've had more advanced uh, science classes, that would probably be more helpful. But I think they do accept students as long as you're in high school. They won't just require like AP Bio or AP Chem prior to that. Will a low AP score affect your application? It's probably the least important factor, to be honest, these days for college applications. So if you get like a two in an AP exam, you, you can just self-report it. So you could just choose to omit it from your application, okay? Next is how many clubs should you attend in high school? Should you aim? Uh, should students aim for positions like officer positions? Uh, number of clubs we normally recommend something along the lines of like three to six clubs. It just depends on how intensive or how time you know like demanding these clubs are. Uh, and yes, you should really try to strive for some officer positions. It shouldn't be your overriding priority. Those just come naturally organically through being very committed and and spending a lot of time with the clubs that you do. Okay. So next is UC Riverside is not a super strong UC campus. Will UC Riverside summer courses still be considered as a valuable option? Yeah, I mean, top colleges still credit like community college courses. So UC Riverside courses obviously would give you access to that. Um, so for summer courses, it's for college credit. Colleges are not going to be snobby about it and say like, oh, the UC Berkeley course is inherently more valuable than the UC Riverside course. It's a UC approved course, right? Which means as long as you take it, there's also a lot of variance in terms of the instructors anyway. So it's not like a UC Berkeley extension course is inherently more more valuable than UC Riverside course, okay? Next, uh, do you say some colleges have reps or employees in local school districts? N no, that's not what I meant. Uh, I meant that admissions officers are assigned a certain territory where they will do like college fairs and visits and get to know certain like um, uh, areas pretty well. They'll establish relationships with the counselors in the area. I don't mean that they have it like hidden uh, employees working in the district who are scouting for them and seeing how challenging it is, right? So typically this means that like um, in a lot of ways, yes, if you do go to a more competitive high school, that is an edge for you. If you're a straight A student at like one of the top high schools in the country, like a Whitney High School in Cerritos, for instance, uh, which is usually considered like top 15, top 20, that's going to be much more telling than someone who goes to someone and someone who attends a high school that's out at the top 1,000 or 2,000, right? Next, I've not taken the hardest classes due to my curriculum. I also attend an online cyber uh, charter school. Does this negatively affect my application? However, I have strong extracurriculars with a good nonprofit and common interest in particularly foster care help improve my interest in the chosen major. Well, you know, of course, if you don't necessarily have the most rigorous high school curriculum, you could augment or supplement that. Like I said, taking outside courses could definitely help, okay? Uh, but yes, you know, having an expansive profile of extracurriculars. I also think that's why standardized testing is very important because if you, you know, unfortunately can't really do much to control the rigor of your high school, showing that you can do well for nationally normed things like standardized testing can definitely help you look more competitive. 
Okay, uh, how do you recruit students with sports talents through universities? Okay, so like I said, you know, definitely you talk to your coach for whatever sport you participate in. You can establish contact with uh, coaches at universities by the time you're a junior and a senior. You should often see if there's metrics. They're online, you know, they're websites for various sports, for instance, to see whether or not your times or your stats are competitive, okay, for uh, whatever schools you're considering. Okay, so unfortunately it's getting pretty late here. I'll take maybe one or two last questions here. Um, okay, so next question here is, the foreign language requirement in the UC admission can be substituted by a good AP score. How about for non-UC colleges, private universities? The three years really mean three years of real coursework? No, actually three years means up to the intermediate level. When they say three years, it means up to the equivalent of like a third year of Spanish or French or whatever, okay? So which means if you have the equivalent of that, it'll normally satisfy it. Many uh, private schools aren't necessarily as like very strict about that necessarily, okay? Uh, next is if I take an AP class via UC Scout outside of school, will it add to your high school transcript GPA? Not directly. You will have to get a transcript through Scout and then send that to whatever colleges you're applying to, okay? All right.